Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox in the Norwegian Adventures. I'm out of park today, and as usual, I cannot remember this park's number. But as you can see, it's out by the fjord behind me here. It's really beautiful. And it's actually one of the few days in uh, the coming weeks and the past weeks where it's not raining. So this is a perfect time to show you what I'm going to show you. And what I'm going to show you is a triple magmount. Coming out of AliExpress, um, this is a sponsored video uh, because I have a deal with AliExpress that lets me pick stuff um, every couple months and I can do videos on them. Um, so I'm going to do a quick review on this magmount here and uh, talk a little bit about that, uh, the quirks and the strange things about it and if it's worth buying or not. And uh, just so this is formally correct, this video is sponsored by AliExpress and if you haven't heard about AliExpress before, well, you've been living under a rock. I'm not going to tell you about that, but you can get pretty much anything over on AliExpress. I use it for ham gear, and I'm lucky enough to have them as a sponsor. So enough about that. Let's take a look at this mag mount, and in order to do that properly, we're going to head over to the bench in the workshop, and we'll be back here right after. So this is how the mount comes from, uh, well, from AliExpress. Um, three magnets, uh, the M10 threaded dingus here which is secured by a nut on the bottom here. And a couple of plastic spacers here, plastic washers. One on the top side and one on the bottom side. And let's, just before we go any further, uh, grab the multimeter here and uh, do a couple of tests here. Let's go ahead and set the multimeter to continuity here. And you can hear it beeps. So, if we check a connection from the center here to the uh, screw that holds the magnet, no continuity. Uh, we do have continuity between the screws now, and I'm going to show you why in just a little while. Uh, but let's get this one off and take a look at what I've done to the mount. You can see the plastic washer here. And what you can see now is that I've sanded off some of the paint here, both here and with these screws, because this paint is, as you can see, non-conductive. That's not a good thing, uh, because we want the ground plane to be continuous from uh, the center here to the magnets. So I needed to sand off the paint here in the center and here. And as you can see, we do have continuity here, but not to the painted parts. So this has obviously been designed and at least not perhaps designed, but it's been made by someone who has never used a mag mount. This thing needs to be conductive between the center and these parts. The, the entire entirety of this needs to be conductive. Um, so if we remove the two rubber gaskets here and we screw this, this back in and if we measure continuity now from the center pin to the edge here, we do have continuity, which is good, which is what we want to have. Uh, this, however, I had some troubles using this uh, portable yesterday. Um, I hadn't filmed this segment yet then. Um, you'll see that, and I think one of the reasons for doing that, and this is going to be a spoiler, is just hand tightening this bolt. So uh, you'll see what happened, but you'll also see that I couldn't make this work portable. Um, I'm going to be back with a video at some later point where I get this thing working. Let's take a look at what the other thing I got from AliExpress was. And that's this piece of coax here. It's five meters of RG58 with a PL plug in one end and an SO connector on the other end, angled SO connector. And that is... So we can take this thingy here, we can unscrew this. We can pop the SO connector through the bottom here. Screw it back on, I'll just hand tighten it now. You need to tighten this properly though. 
And with the screw tightened here, we can just check a connection from shielding to shielding. Try to get it so you can see this. We do have, do have continuity here. We do have continuity here. So that's good. And we do have a continuity from center to center. And then we can just use one of these uh, PL to 3 8 24 mount adapter. Pop that on here. And this does not fit properly though. Um, I'm going to show you. This is about as far down as it gets. So there's a bit of a gap here, but it, is, it has nothing to do with functionality. And that's the big overview on this uh, mag mount here from the desk. So we'll be right back and uh, go on to the rest of the outdoor testing. And as you saw from that clip from the workbench, we have two possibilities here. We can either use this cable that I ordered or five meters of RG58 with an SO mount here and uh, PL to uh, 3 8 adapter here and use a hamstick. We're going to do that first and measure some SWR on that. Then we're going to hook up uh, with the M10 adapter that I also show you. We're going to hook up a standard Chinese, that little red base whip, uh, measure SWR. See if we can get this park on the air and draw some conclusions. So a pretty simple video this time. So let's go straight ahead, put this on the car, put an antenna on it and measure some SWR. And for SWR measurements, we're going to use this German FAVA4. Uh, I've covered this meter in a previous video. You cannot get this anymore. You can get the FAVA5, I think, which is an improved version. I got this from a silent key a couple years ago, and I haven't looked back. It's not the best analyzer in the world, but it's easy to use portable. You have three buttons, and you can use it with gloves. And it's powered by a couple of AA batteries, which lasts for well, about a year or so. So let's uh, hook this up and see uh, if we can get it working. And let me see if I can get it to focus here for you uh, without the glare from my video light, but at 14.3, we're at 117. Let's get the focus here. Let's see if we can get that gun. I hope you can see that. 122, so 1.1, 1.2 at 20 meters. So um, it shows that with my modifications, we got a good ground connection here. Uh, that was the important part by showing you the SWR here. Now I want to try something different. I want to try the uh, little Chinese red base whip with the M10 adapter and uh, see if that works any better and if we can actually use this for a full-size whip. Uh, and an M10 threaded whips because most whips now or a lot of whips now are Chinese with M10 threads. So let's go ahead and take the mag mount down, uh, take the uh, hamstick down and replace the antenna cable with the uh, with the M10 dingus and uh, we'll be right back. So let's go ahead and screw this M10 dingus in here and this is always hard to do on camera but we're gonna Slip this M10 dingus through here, and we're gonna just tighten the hand tighten the bolt here for now. I didn't bring any tools in order to do this, but I think hand tightening is, is gonna be good. So now we have the M10 dingus. We're gonna put the red base here, the whip on top, and um, we're gonna tune the antenna, and then we're gonna see if we can make some QSOs. And there's also one thing I gotta mention: these magnets are good. They stick to the car really, really well. Uh, much better than I actually anticipated and much better than my old triple mag mount.
And let's just do a quick continuity check with a multimeter here and see that we do have continuity. It beeps. It does not beep there, but it beeps there. So we have the correct continuity and we do have ground, in fact. And of course, we're gonna need some coax. Let's get that hooked up and uh, make sure that uh, we get a good SWR on this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook the coax up. I'm gonna run a couple of laps back and forth, shorten the whip probably, and uh, then I'm gonna show you the SWR when it's in tune. Well, that did not go as expected. I couldn't get the red base whip to tune here. So I'm gonna try the MA-12 and see if I can get that in tune. And uh, if not, I gotta investigate further. But if so, we'll just go on to the, uh, uh, to the hamstick instead and see if that helps. So let's go ahead and uh, check, the, uh, check the MA-12. Okay, sometimes things does not go according to plan, and the M10 adapter seems to have stick, it sticks really well to the red base here. So without any tools, I'm actually not able to unscrew this now. So uh, let's go ahead and make a couple of QSOs on uh, a ham stick, uh, get the park on the air, and then we'll draw some conclusions after that. And the station of the day is the 706 Mark II G. And for the observant viewers, I have not replaced the bumper yet. So let's go ahead, see if I can make a couple of QSOs here. And as usual, I'm not going to show you every single QSO. I'm going to show you a couple of good ones, uh, maybe one, maybe two, at the most three, and then we'll be back and draw some conclusions on the mag mount. CQ Parks and Deer, CQ Parks and Deer, CQ Parks and Deer. This is Lima Bravo Zero Fox Strad India. Lima Bravo Zero Fox Strad India calling CQ Parks and Deer. To Echo Zero, Echo Sierra Yankee. Thank you uh, there, Mike. Uh, five and seven, five and seven today. Over. Hello, good to hear you today. Haven't heard you for a while. Uh, you're also 57. Over. Thank you for the five and seven. And it's been a while since I've been doing a poda, so it's good to be back outside and uh, playing some radio. Over. Yeah, okay, good to hear you. Hope it's not too cold up there, though. Over. No, it's about seven degrees and uh, partly cloudy, so it's actually a pretty beautiful day. The only day where it's not raining for the last past or, or next couple of weeks. Over. <laughs> yeah, we've got rain all day today, so not a nice day, so it's a day for radio for me. Anyway, thanks, Morton. Good to hear you. Seven three, good luck. Okay, I guess it's time to draw some conclusions then on the mag mount. And as a mag mount, it actually works, and it works well. Um, as you saw, I had some issues with the, that M10 adapter, and I think my mistake was just tightening the nut with my hands, and hence I made the uh, red base be tighter than the nut on it. And it's actually so tight now that I'm probably going to need a vise and some tools to get it open. Poda wise, I managed 45 QSOs in, let's see here. Uh, 45 QSOs in 23 minutes. Uh, that's a rate of 126 QSOs per hour. Uh, I was actually up to about 190 for one point. So, great band conditions. At least I think they are. Um, they're at least good enough for what I'm looking for. Uh, but as of the mag mount, well, I gotta give that a thumbs up for me. It is, it is a mag mount. It has three magnets. It's got a metal plate and a place to fit your antenna. It's that simple and it's that easy. Um, I mean, it's not rocket science. Um, the thing is, they should have um, not used isolating uh, paint on it uh, or insulating paint. Uh, I got some comments on that. I think the correct term is insulating paint. So uh, non-conductive paint, let's call it that. Um, that made made me have to do some some things. I am a ham that's been out before, so I knew that I needed to test for it. 
Not everyone does that. So um, a thumbs up with some caveats though. Uh, you need to do some modifications to this. If you're willing to do that, it's gonna be a great mag mount. And the magnets, as I said, they're so strong that it's really hard to get this off the car. And I'll also um, leave some affiliate links for the mag mount and uh, for the uh, cable that I used uh, down in the description. Uh, and as I also seen, there have been some discount codes over here. So um, that's in case you wanna buy anything with my affiliate links or not with my affiliate links. You can still use the discount codes. Okay, I'll see you down the bands. I'll see you in my next video, 7-3, my friends.